Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I am talking about food combining. So if you have somebody who has digestive problems and usually in midlife, that what happens is your digestive problems get worse. And also I'm going to be talking about um, how to decrease cravings. So food combining, we're talking about something that a lot of people don't know about and how that affects your health, how it affects your energy, how it affects your weight and bloating and all of that, and also how to decrease cravings. So let's get started. Hello, Liz. Oh, I had a bit of a hard time getting online, so that's why I'm a little bit late. Welcome. I'm doing this first live in my Facebook group, Women Creating Healthy Lives. So it's a free Facebook community for women over 40, and this is where I hang out basically every day. I will post trainings, recipes, recipe ideas, recipe videos, show you what I'm making in a day, show you what I eat. Now, I'm post-menopause, but we also talk about the hormones, the symptoms, the weight gain, how to lose weight, all of those things when it comes to living healthy and more vibrant energy over the age of 40, so living your best life. Welcome, welcome to those who are joining me. And if you're watching this on YouTube, come and join us on uh, Facebook, Women Creating Healthy Lives. If you're watching on Facebook, make sure to join my uh, YouTube because I upload many of these Facebook videos onto YouTube. So therefore, sometimes it's really hard to find them on Facebook again, but you can find them on YouTube, most of them. Diana Marchant, I've been doing videos since about 2011. So I have about 800 videos on YouTube. And many of them, like way, 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 way back from the very beginning, I also talked about um, raw food. I was into raw food. So you get a lot of recipes. Um, and I really see my evolution and, um, yeah, get different how I've aged. My beginning videos were very, I was not good on video at the beginning. <laughs> All right. Welcome ladies. So happy to have you here. I'm just going to, um, let people know, um, say hello when you join me, make sure to post hello, even if it's an emoji, even if it's a put, give me a like or a love on this video. That helps Facebook show my videos more, which really helps me reach more people and reach out to you. And also so that you will see my videos in the future. I mean, Facebook knows you want to watch them, then they'll show them to you. That has to do with the algorithms because they often will, you can go onto my page, but you may not even see my videos because Facebook thinks, hey, she never comments, never does anything. Maybe she doesn't like them. So please say hello. Even if you're watching the replay, let me know you're watching the replay. Of course, you can ask any questions as we're going through this. Okay. All right. So for those who are unfamiliar about food combining, or you may be thinking, why do I even have to worry about it? What is this? Well, one thing that I want to say is when I found out about food combining and I changed the way I was eating, my digestive issues cleared up a lot, like huge. So I had digestive problems ever since I was in it. Thank you for that like and make sure you say hello, post an emoji, ask a question, let Facebook know you want to see my video. So that helps really with the likes and the loves and the comments. Um. When I started perimenopause, so I had digestive problems when I was in the age of my, in my 20s. I was diagnosed with IBS and I saw many do regular doctors plus naturopaths and um, I got tested multiple times for food sensitivities and allergies because of these issues I was having from my early 20s. The problem is not once ever was I told about something called food combining. I did not find out about food combining rules or start to follow them till I was probably about 45, 44, 45. That's incredible. So I lived with digestive problems from my early, early 20s on for over 20 years. When I did find out about food combining and I started follow, hi, Sheila, Shelly, Shelly, sorry, hi, Shelly, don't have my glasses on. When I started following food combining rules, and you can Google them, my digestive problems greatly decreased. So here I was for over 20 years. Not one doctor ever mentioned that to me. And this is what's really frustrating, okay? If you go to a regular doctor, like a regular MD, your family practitioner, whatever, nurse practitioner, whatever, 
they don't learn nutrition okay so they do not learn nutrition or anything about foods or nutrition or food combining at all in their education so they can't help you with it it's great to get if you have digestive problems to go to your regular doctor hi stephanie to go to your regular doctor and have them do a check i had one of those internal exam things and all that you know too have them check just to make sure you don't have some really serious digestive stuff going on or bad things with your intestines or colon or colitis or Crohn's or anything or or celiac, anything like that, okay? So get checked out, first of all, by a medical doctor. Then, of course, at the same time, <laughs> research food combining rules. Now, they can seem really confusing, okay? And there's a lot of rules. So I'm going to tell you the simple overall things to begin to follow. Starchy carbohydrates, right? And proteins and meat. So meat proteins. Starchy carbohydrates and meat proteins should never be eaten at the same meal. And guess how we were raised, right? We were raised meat, potatoes or a starch and a little bit of vegetables. That's the way I ate ever since I was a little tiny girl. Why do you think I had such bad digestive problems? For me, my body could not handle that. Now, there's some people that can, although it's not healthy. So it's not healthy to combine a starchy carbohydrate with a meat protein or even a fish protein. Fish is not as bad, okay? I can go out at a restaurant and have rice with fish or sushi rice with fish sometimes and be okay. But if I was, I don't eat meat right now, but if I was to have like roast beef and potatoes, right, at the same time, I would suffer a lot. And I probably, that's a lot of big thing why I said I can't eat meat. I couldn't eat meat. It was like something was so wrong. It was just like, no, 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 no. This doesn't work for me. I feel so horrible after, okay? And so what you also don't want to um, combine, which many people may do or you may have done, is fruit after a meal. Any kind of fruit after a meal. Or things like a smoothie. Not after a meal. Okay, so we're going to talk about why. So starchy carbohydrates like pasta, rice, potatoes, um, a lot of the squash, squashes that are heavy, even yams for me, I have to really watch out. I never have yam because I don't eat meat anyways. And I would not like, yeah, I'm not, I like yams, but they're not my favorite, but they're really good for you in midlife. Okay, so the orange yams, those are good for you. Those are fine for you to eat in midlife. They're actually really good for you. I, my stomach just doesn't agree with them that much. But you would never combine those with meat. Um, I find it even hard to have, and I like, I like squash, let's say squash soup if I, with fish or something. To me, that might cause problems too. So if you are somebody who notices you get bloated often, you get crampy, you get constipated, you have diarrhea, like you go through digestive distress, you have acid reflux, um, heartburn, anything like that, I want you to really pay attention to how, what you eat at a meal, during a meal. So what does go good together, hello, Kathy, nice to have you. Do you guys suffer from digestive problems? Do you know about food combining? Let me know below. So you could have a salad or veggies, mixed veggies, I find this hard to believe. Yeah, no kidding, because we were raised so differently, right, Stephanie? But actually, it's science. It is how our body works. Our digestive, so we have digestive enzymes, and as we age, our digestive enzymes are decreased. Now, live food, like veggies and greens raw, contain live enzymes, right? So live enzymes help us digest our foods. When we have less digestive enzymes that are in our gut and we're putting extra foods to digest, harder foods to digest combinations in our gut, our body can't digest them very well. And so we end up with the bloating. We end up with the undigested food, which ferments and causes gas. And it can actually ferment, spoil and putrefy in our intestines and, and almost go toxic. It spoils and goes toxic and starts to poke holes in our digestive lining. And that can lead to leaky gut. And when our digestive system is not healthy and as we age, the digestive system, the di intestines get like 
lots of folds in them and unevenness so that food doesn't go through them really smoothly. It gets caught in the pockets of the intestines and therefore it never goes through the intestines properly and get eliminated. It gets stuck in there and it ferments, it spoils, it putrefies, it goes bad. And that's almost like toxins in our gut, okay? And that is where we get a lot of health problems, period, but definitely a lot of all types of digestive problems. So when we eat foods that don't combine properly and don't work well together, we're going to just feel, it's, we're going to feel really bad. Yes, so that means starchy carbohydrates and meats should not be combined together. So you would eat meat or fish with vegetables or fresh greens. You can cook your greens like collards, Swiss chard, kale. You can have salads, you can have broccoli, you can have asparagus, you can have cauliflower, all that with your meat. But don't have potatoes, rice, pasta, buns, breads with your meat. And that's the simple rules. Okay, because your gut produces, it sends, when you're about to digest, it's giving out digestive enzymes for either a starchy carbohydrate or the protein, the meat. It's going to give out digestive enzymes to digest one of those things, not both at the same time. So you're only going to be able to digest one really well. The other one's not going to be digested good. And that's what causes the problem because it sticks in there. It doesn't get digested. It doesn't get broken down properly. And it causes this distress within the gut. Okay. So fruit should be eaten first thing in the morning on its own. But in midlife, <laughs> things are a bit different. So when you're going through the midlife change and you're, lo you're gaining weight, you're having the weight problems and digestive problems and whatever else are going on, the symptoms, the hormonal up and downs. If you eat fruit on its own, it tends to go right to fat. It's converted to sugar really fast and goes right to fat instead of being converted to energy for energy. So let's say if you are a woman over 40, even if you are having, gaining weight and you're post-menopause, then what you need to consider is, like, say, you can have grapefruit with chia gel. Now, chia gel is a protein and a fat, but it's not a hard protein to digest. So there are some rules, and in my programs, you learn all about that, and your recipes and your meals and everything are perfectly formulated so you don't end up with those problems, right? Um, so you learn all about, definitely way more about that when you coach with me or in my programs. It can seem a little confusing now, but if you keep it simple, if I'm having my fruit, I'm going to have it with my smoothie because you're, you're not, <clears throat> you're combining a bit of the fruit with some fresh greens, maybe a bit of cucumber, um, maybe some chia gel, but there's no meat, right? There's no meat in it. And there's no starchy carbohydrates. So you do not want to put fruit with starchy carbohydrates or any meat, period. Not even within two hours. Not even within two hours. So never have fruit for dessert, ever. If you definitely, if you have digestive problems, right? So when you get up in the morning, your system, I have a really sluggish digestive system still, so I don't eat right away in the morning. But if you somebody get up and your system is like kind of cleaned out, or you clean out, you know, it's pretty well, then you would have your lighter foods first, like fruit, your smoothie, fruit with chia gel, whatever, your smoothie, whatever, first thing, because it is more water, right? Water content, those light vegetables, the fruit is high water, and the smoothie itself is a liquid. It's going to digest and move through you very fast. You have that first. Then you have, then you can have something a little heavier. Now, if you have a heavier food first, it's going to sit in your digestive system or gut and take a long time to digest. So if you put something that wants to digest fast, it's not going to be able to go through. It has to sit on top of that undigested food. It ferments. It starts to break down too fast. This is still breaking down. So this sits there and doesn't digest properly, right? Mm. 
no, not really. Not in, not in midlife as much, Stephanie. Not fruit on its own. You can have fruit in a smoothie with greens, like fresh greens like kale, spinach, Swiss chard, with chia gel maybe, because um, you want to balance it with a bit of good fats, a bit of protein, and some greens. And greens are protein, kind of. Greens are high in protein. You don't want to have just an orange after you work out. If you are someone who has belly fat, okay? So if you have belly fat, Billy, no, he wants his cookies. If you have belly fat, it is best to combine your fruit with, let's say, a chia gel or in your smoothie, okay? It's not the worst thing. If you haven't eaten, it's not your worst thing. So, um, yeah, if you have belly fat, stay away from fruit on its own. Combine the fruit with your smoothie, some in your smoothie, and definitely with some chia gel, right? Or like chia gel and hemp seeds or chia gel and um, pumpkin seeds or something like that. Right? So these are some of the, the food combining, right? So heavier food, it makes sense. It takes longer to break down. You don't want to put fruit or something fast or a smoothie. You wouldn't eat a meal and then have a smoothie because the smoothie, it just wants to run right through you, but it can't. It has to sit on top. And it starts to break down and bubble and ferment. Just think of how things ferment. Fruit can ferment, especially in the fridge or on the counter, right? And it has nowhere to go. It sits in your gut. Yeah, rots in your gut. Really bad. And um, most people, so because we age and our digestive systems slow down, get more sluggish, if it we're not really healthy especially. And because we, our digestive enzymes are weaker, as we age, we don't have as many, um, then things don't break down as good or as fast as they do, as they used to in our digestive system. So you can see like a teenage boy or a boy, a man in his early 20s can eat anything probably. They're usually very active. They're usually eating anything they want. Nothing bothers their gut, right? Well, they're younger, the digestive enzymes are strong, they're quite active, they're moving around a lot, their system's just, boom, 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 right? Um, so there you go. It's a big difference. It's a big difference. As we age, we change. And then our hormones are also, for us women in midlife, our hormones are going crazy, which affects our digestive system. Again, it makes it worse. So therefore, we have more problems with this. Okay, so acid reflux, when I ate starchy carbohydrates right away, even now I get acid reflux. When I don't eat cooked starches, I do not have acid reflux. So things like even any type of like simple carbohydrates, even a lot of rice cakes, which I don't eat a lot of those. But if you were to eat a lot of crackers, eat a lot of rice cakes, eat all those, those are simple carbohydrates. They can also, you can also end up having acid reflux because of that. So acid reflux, heartburn, digestive problems, IBS, all has to do with how you eat. How you eat, okay? Makes a huge difference. You can change all of that. All of it. Now, sometimes taking certain supplements, of course, <laughs> help, and, and you should. If you have digestive problems, I suggest taking certain supplements and working on gut health. Um, so definitely research gut health. What can I take to improve my gut health? Um, probiotics, at least 50 billion. At least 50 billion. One probiotic before you go to bed. Sometimes a probiotic when you first wake up in the morning. Don't think yogurt has enough probiotics. It doesn't. Kefir does not have enough probiotics. Not when we're at this age. Okay. And anyways, usually the dairy causes more problems with our gut. So forget about that for probiotics. Don't even have, don't even take yogurt for probiotics. Take an actual probiotic. Okay. So that is food combining. Does anybody have any more questions? Those are the simple rules. You can Google food combining charts and you'll end up with tons of charts online. Yes, great. And you can also take digestive enzymes. So there are digestive enzymes that I take to this day, every single meal, mostly, um, because I like to support my body. I like to have these enzymes that help break down my food properly. All right. <clears throat> and also in all my programs, you guys, and I'm going to do, 
I'm doing something coming up, you guys. I'm so excited. I'm so excited about this new program I have. So all of you who are quite new to me, I had a program called Where to Start. And it is the best place to start in midlife, right? When you have the weight gain, when you don't have low energy, when you can't sleep well, all those things you want to learn about. Um, so I have a Where to Start program. Well, I've changed it. We're going to go for 21 days and I'm going to do it live. It's usually a self-study. So I'm changing it. I'm making it way better. And I'm making it 21 days. And you have live time with me. So I get to coach you. It's going to be amazing. It's called. It's going to be called Where to Start Something Something. And I'm going to let you know about that soon. So I highly, highly. In 21 days, you will know absolutely all of this. What to eat for you. How to work it. You will be on your way to weight loss, to more energy, to vibrant health. Absolutely. In 21 days. You know. Because once you know, you know. And that's what I help you work through in that new program. And it's going to be live. So it's going to be amazing. All right. Cravings. <laughs> We're going to talk about cravings. All right. So crazy cravings that you can get when you're in midlife. And that can happen. Uh, this is just um, chlorophyll. So people who have digestive problems, I'm going to grab my chlorophyll to let you see. And there's also super powders you can take and stuff that you learn in my programs, Kate, okay, that we talk about for this. Let me get my chlorophyll first. So chlorophyll is a fantastic, um, this is backwards, but it's liquid chlorophyll, super green, very good for your blood. Um, also good for digestion. So I started taking some chlorophyll again. I found some. You really got to be careful to find some without junk in it. Okay. There's chlorophyll with so much preservatives in it. I had to order this on Amazon. I'll take a picture of this one. This one is, um, it's chlorophyll from alfalfa. And it has nothing else added to it. It's amazing. This is a really good one. <coughs> Chlorophyll, and I add it to my water, and it doesn't taste bad, and I add it to my smoothies. I usually add more than this, but that's it right there. Super easy. There's so many things you can take that are super easy, good for your health, good for other areas of your body, and that also improve your digestion and improve your health. That are so easy, you guys. Oh, my God. I get so frustrated, right? There's, we do not have to take tons of drugs. You do not have to take all those drugs, especially for digestion. Okay. Cravings. What happens with cravings is um, if somebody is in insulin resistance, which can happen in midlife, because if you've watched any of my prior videos on insulin resistance and stuff, during this phase of life, we process starchy carbohydrates and fruit differently. Instead of going to fuel, it goes, it goes almost into like sugar and goes right to fat. So oatmeal, pastas, breads, muffins, anything made with flour, even gluten-free stuff. When you eat it in midlife or beyond, if you haven't changed this yet, um, rice, even brown rice, all of that is seen as it turns into like a simple sugar and goes right to fat. So what can happen is if you're especially vegan or something, you're consuming a lot of these things, thinking you're eating healthy, oatmeal included, cooked oatmeal, you can almost end up in like insulin resistance. And then if you're having wine, if you're having candies or chocolate or some desserts, eat way more easier than any other time in your life. You can end up with insulin resistance, which means so much of the food you're eating is actually going to fat. And you're spiking your blood sugar levels like crazy. And you, almost, you get addicted to that. Your body gets addicted to that blood sugar level spike. And so it signals, I'm hungry, I'm craving, I'm craving, I'm craving, I want this, I want that, I want this, I want that. So that's one reason why you have crazy cravings in midlife. And you go through this when you're in the midlife phase, perimenopause. Or menopause or post. You can still have those things if you haven't changed how you eat. Another reason you have crazy cravings is because you're not eating enough of the right foods. You're not, you're not feeding your cells, the nutrients they require, the vitamins, the minerals, the antioxidants, the essential fatty acids, and the proper amino acids. They're not getting enough. And so what's happening is they're signaling, I need food. You have to feed me. You're not feeding me. And they're sending out signals to you. It feels like 
I want a snack. I got a snack. I got to have something. Right? I got to eat something else. Um, so you're not nutrient. So why I know this for, I mean, not why, but I have that every time I do a program. And if you take my Where to Stoke program, which is coming, it's going to start on March 22nd, I think. You will notice within the first two weeks, your cravings disappear. Within the first two weeks of working with me. Usually within the first first week. Doesn't matter what the person was dealing with before they started working with me. And the weight gain stops, guaranteed. Your weight gain will stop. You will begin to lose weight, but your weight gain will stop. So you will not gain weight, okay? There is a way to do this. If you are in a phase right now where you're like, I just keep getting weight, I just keep getting weight, I have five pairs of pants in the closet none of them fit me I have three different sizes of dresses and pants and suits in the closet and none of them fit me I go up and down like crazy you're not quite understanding what to eat now during this phase of life there are things that you have that are off like maybe it's food combining maybe it's what you're eating in a day maybe it's the way you're combining those foods maybe it's because you on and on right the insulin problems the metabolic the blood sugar problems they can be corrected they are always corrected, usually in my programs. Um, the women in my Transform program right now, they're in there. They just finished week two. Just finished week two. They all, one lady's lost six pounds in two weeks. They all say, I'm really not that hungry. I cannot believe I don't have cravings. I'm not that hungry. I feel amazing. You're the bloating the water retention disappears. You lose the weight. You know how you start to lose weight in your face? It starts to thin out. Yes, within two weeks. So, and your energy is way better. You notice difference when you begin to make these positive changes. <coughs> so, you may think you're eating highly nutritious foods. You may believe that you're doing all that. But if you still have cravings, something's off. You're not... There's something that you're doing that is causing those cravings and keeping you in some sort of a loop where your body is not getting fed properly or it's reacting to things wrong, like putting things, like seeing certain foods as sugar because of some hormones that are out of balance and blood sugar problems and addicted, being addicted to certain foods. Now, in my programs... I do not tell them to stop drinking wine or to stop drinking coffee. And a lot of people think, oh my God, I got to stop. No, you don't have to give up all these things. If you want to, the results are better and faster. Coffee, you can still have a cup of coffee a day. I, I never tell someone to take that out unless they're extremely stressed and in adrenal fatigue, then definitely we deal with that. But, um, and, even, and having a bit of wine on the weekend is not causing your weight gain. What causing your weight gain is food, is the way you are eating, guaranteed. I've seen it for years and years and years. You're, every woman I've worked with, every single woman I've worked with, unless it's thyroid. Now, of course, remember what I said is go to your doctor, get checked out by your doctor to make sure that you don't have some serious thing going on. I don't work with women who have serious health conditions, okay? I help the women who are like, I've gone, I've checked up, they say I'm fine, everything's good, but I still don't feel very good, I'm still bloated, I still have digestive problems, I still can't lose this weight, I keep gaining weight, um, I don't have energy, um, I don't know what to do, there's so much confusing information out there, I don't know who to believe, I've tried this diet, it didn't work, I tried that diet, it didn't work, I tried this thing, and it was so restrictive, I got results, but there's no way I can eat like that forever, right? Your life, it's about living healthy and enjoying your life, like eating in a way, all the women in my Transform program, this is a three month program that they're going through right now, we're in, we just did two weeks so far, only two weeks, um, they love the food. They're feeling fantastic. No problem making it. It's easy. Right? Right away. Within two weeks. The weight gain stopped. Starting to lose weight. 
no more bloating, greatly decrease in water retention, better balance everything, right? So when you begin on, when you get on the right track with body, mind, and spirit, and soul, body, mind, soul, your, your body comes into better balance. So if, um, so for the cravings, if you are doing things like rice cakes, uh, crackers, protein bars, a protein shake with almond milk and just protein powder, um, you know, or a mix like that, you know, what a lot of first thing in the morning, if you're waking up and you're having toast with peanut butter or a boiled egg or um, oatmeal, all of those things are not really the right things to have. They're not the nutrition you need. They're not the nutrition you need. Okay. They are okay and they're not unhealthy. It's not like they're unhealthy, but they're not the right foods that are going to decrease your cravings. Your cells. So the problem is also people think about carbohydrates, protein, and fat, and they worry so much about protein, right? They worry so much about protein, these protein drinks and protein shakes and protein bars and this and that and all of these things. That helps to balance your blood sugar levels, but it does not give your body the nutrients that it needs. That is not feeding your cells vitamins, minerals, essential fatty acids, trace minerals, right? That's what you need. Your glands that produce your hormones need minerals and good fats. Minerals, good fats, and amino acids. Amino acids are the building blocks to proteins. Amino acids are in every vegetable. So broccoli has protein. Um, Swiss char has protein. Spinach has protein. Right? So we got to stop thinking about protein powders, protein bars, and meat and eggs as what we need to focus on. Because those do not have the other nutrients your body needs. That's why a lot of women don't end up with more energy, losing weight, and um, decreased cravings, right? Those are not going to help you do any of those things. They may help you stay fuller longer, but your body's not getting fed what it needs. Not from just those. Those are okay, but you need to have other foods <laughs> is basically what I want to say. So when your day consists of starting your day with just stuff like that, and then you may munch on crackers or a few nuts here and there or a protein bar. Um, what else? A yam, right? Baked yam. Things like that. You know, I will look at your day and go, wow, where are the nutrients? Like you didn't really eat anything that's going to feed your cells, right? That's like, it's filler and it has certain part, certain things in that food, but that food isn't nutrient dense. You need, you need the foods that have the vitamins and minerals, the trace minerals, the essential fatty acids, the good amino acids. And it doesn't mean you have to be vegan. It doesn't mean you have to be vegetarian. Actually, most vegan foods, some vegans is really unhealthy. Food is really unhealthy, right? A lot of vegan food is very, very high starch. And in midlife, that will not work for you, right? Um, now, the vegan food that's healthy, of course, there's a lot of vegan food that's healthy. You know, broccoli is super healthy, <laughs> spinach, Swiss jar, all those things. And that's also ways of combining them in simple recipes and in meals that taste absolutely amazing. And you get a combination of food that is really highly nutritious. And when you begin to eat those in the first two weeks, you notice outstanding changes. Because your cells are like, yes, thank you for saving me. Thank you for feeding me the exact nutrients I need. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, so if you're having cravings, you could be addicted to getting those blood sugar level spikes. And so when you try to take those out, those foods out, your body wants it back. It wants that high, that blood sugar high. It wants that feeling again. Um, and then if you're eating any type of bread products, bagels, crackers, rice cakes that are really light, those are simple carbohydrates. And simple carbohydrates, too many of those will cause more cravings because they they turn into sugar really fast in your body. So then the blood sugar level and evenness, and then your body will just like crave them, crave them, want them. And they're no nutrition. So zero nutrition. 
So your body's saying, you haven't fed me. Where's the nutrition? Where's the nutrition? You haven't fed me, right? And so it sends that out. And there's also, so another thing about vegan, you can consume lentils and beans and those are carbohydrates and they also and start and grains and they also have some minerals but they that that's a very limited amount of stuff that your body needs if you consume too many of those you definitely have the weight gain you can continue with the acid reflux the bloating digestive problems and possibly the blood sugar level spikes and high insulin right so even though those are healthy kind of vegan options, consuming too many of those keep your, keep you in a loop of not being able to lose weight, of being tired, fatigued, blood sugar level problems, belly fat, um, and cravings. Okay. So there's a play of what you eat, eating enough of the right foods, and then right away your body will start to adjust super fast. Super fast. And you also begin to detoxify properly. If you're not getting enough of the um, foods with minerals and high mineral foods and high alkaline foods, your body gets sluggish, acidic, doesn't detoxify fast enough. Your digestive problems get worse. And that can lead to, well, that does lead to illness and disease and a lot of problems that require, um, I don't, what else do you call drugs? I don't even know what you call them. <laughs> Over-the-counter drug stuff. <laughs> um, oh, my God. And, you know, there's women who are in their 40s who are their doc in early 50s. Doctors are recommending um, cholesterol drugs, high blood pressure drugs, um, and things like that. It's That's not necessary. You can change from what you eat. You can change it through food, through nutrition, the proper nutrition. And it doesn't have to be hard. Okay. All right. You guys have any questions? Thank you for being here live. I really love that. Love appreciating. Make sure to say hello. So um, Facebook lets you see my videos. Um, if Facebook doesn't think you're interested in my videos, you might not see them. So make sure you say hello. Give me a like or a love. And um, please ask any questions you might have. I want to see if there's any more questions. Hi, Charlotte. And if you're on YouTube, feel free. I want to put this in YouTube after, so feel free to post a question or comment below on my YouTube feed and just say hello. I would love to know that you're watching too. And just a reminder, I have a YouTube channel, Diana Marchand. And I also, if you're on YouTube watching me, um, come on over to Women Creating Healthy Lives on Facebook. And I do have a website, dianamarchand.com. Now, does anybody have any questions? I am going to, and I am doing a, a, a new program for people who are new to me, kind of beginning this journey and really want to get the guidance, the help and the structure and the recipes and the like, I want to do this. Show me what to do. Let's do this and feel better within the first and second week. Bang. It's going to be a 21 day program for you to kind of suss out. Oh, this is what she does. This is what she's talking about. You'll never have to diet again. Won't, wouldn't that be amazing? Seriously, you'll never have to diet again. <laughs> you won't have to worry about it again. You won't be confused. I want to end the confusion, end the um, on again, off again, end the struggle that you have with food. Because it doesn't have to be. There doesn't have to be this struggle with food. I can tell you that right now. Hi, Rebecca. So if you just tune in and watch from the beginning, because we had a really good discussion on food combining and how important it is to you even if you weren't sure about it in the past. Why the, um, you know, I always wondered why do the, um, why do the food shows still show protein, starch, and vegetable, right? As a meal, protein, starch, and vegetable. I don't really know. All I know is that's the way it's been going for um, 100 or so years. And of course, Back to farmers, when they needed those foods, they got up, they worked really super hard all day. They were very physical. They ate whole foods, no chemicals, no crap in it, right? Now our food contain, contains so many preservatives, chemical flavorings, 
spices that are unnatural, everything. It's just so full of hormones. The meat's full of hormones. The dairy's full of hormones, right? So our body's ingesting all this fake food and stuff that it can't metabolize. That alone screws up our hormones and our digestive system, making things worse, right? Yes. Yeah, in my new program, you, you definitely learn how to make eating healthy simple because that's what I'm all about. That is what I'm all about. I love cooking and making meals, and I love giving you guys ideas. That's my love, but I realize that a lot of people don't like to do that, so that's why I help out with um, all my recipes and stuff are completely doable, and there's some that are more difficult for those who like those things. Like, I also have things like a CD bread and a buckwheat bread and crackers that you, you make all those your own. Super easy, no yeast, no flours, no special flours, all really easy, healthy, nutritious, high nutrient dense things that help to lower your blood pressure, balance your blood sugar levels, help your body release the weight, right? All of those things. So I do have amazing... Um, recipes that include things that you may go what am I supposed to eat right so don't worry you won't feel deprived do you guys have any questions sorry I'm just looking on the um on the Facebook on my computer that's where I am thank you so much I'm just gonna make sure because <laughs> I just don't want to miss a comment so let me just see any questions or comments you guys Reach out to me. I also do one-on-one -on -one coaching. You can do one session with me. You can do three sessions with me. Um, and you get some recipes. You can also do four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, whatever. Okay. So there's a price for everybody. Okay. So, yeah, just message me on Facebook. Uh, if you're interested in working with me but you don't know how, what would be best for you, we can set up a time to talk. No obligation, no cost at all. And never force anybody to work with me. That would not be good. <laughs> Right. I just want to know, you know, we want to see, can I help you? What do you really need help and support with? And are you ready to start doing it the right way? Finally. All right. Feel free to reach out to me. Have an amazing night. So good to have you guys on live. Thank you so much for watching those who are watching the replay. Much love to you. Bye bye.